by a show of hands, I just want to know how many of you have heard me preach before? Okay, how many of you have never seen me before? Just want to know. Okay, there's, okay, good, good, good. All right. Um, today, I am going to do something different. That's why I don't need to have the pulpit. And if you notice, I got no, nothing on me because we're going to do magic. All right. Oh, no, no, we're not. Okay. Uh, um, I, I, uh, number one, I just want to thank you all for having me. I'm very blessed. Uh, every year coming to KL is the highlight of my year. I get to come here. I bring my family, and we have a great time. And last night, I did a message. Then after I did the message, I was talking to Pastor Kevin, and I actually told him, I said, Pastor Kevin, you know, this message is it's not actually supposed to be done the way that it was done last night. And it's because I've been taking a doctor's course. I've been studying for my doctors. And one of the homework that we have is that we're supposed to write a first-person narrative sermon. Now, what is a first-person narrative sermon? This type of sermon, number one, you have to memorize the whole thing. And number two, you speak as if you are that person from the Bible. You try to bring the audience with you into the Bible. And you're looking through it through a literature point of view. And so today, I've done this in Chinese. Actually, you know, amazing thing is English is my native language, but I've actually not done this in English. So I'm trying my best, and I hope that it really works out. And I hope that you're going to be blessed. So we're going to just try something new today, okay? So let's just have a little fun, and we're going to try this first-person narrative sermon. Have you ever seen revival? I haven't. I want to see revival. I've heard about revival. You know, they tell me when revival comes, you walk down the street, you're going to be able to hear family singing. And they're so happy inside. The whole family is together as one united. I've heard about revivals. As you look into the cities, there are no more crimes. The jails are empty. The judges are out of job. I've heard about revival where no more crime, no more bars, no more drug addicts, no more alcoholics. I've heard about revival, but I haven't seen it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce myself. My name's Levi. And no, I'm not the son of Jacob. I'm just a little priest working in the temple. And I'm not famous. But my teacher, I tell you, he's a great man. His name is Jehoiada. Oh, wow. He has done some incredible things. One of his most famous things was this. During that time, there was a crazy queen. She killed off everybody. When her son died, she killed off all the grandkids, everybody. She wanted to be the queen. And when that happened, there was one young son that was just born. So they took this young son and brought it to my teacher, Jehoiada. When the son was living in the temple, my teacher taught him and told him, one day you will be a great king. One day you shall rule. One day you will bring revival. I remember growing up with Joe Ash. I would carry him on my back. We'll go play soccer. We'd climb trees. I'd change his diaper. 
wake up in the middle of the night, cleaning him up, giving him milk. Oh boy, the good old days. One day, when he was seven, the king was seven. Jehoiada, my teacher, got together all the nobles and they overthrew the evil queen. Oh boy, I tell you, we were excited because finally we're going to see true revival. We were excited because we knew something good was about to happen. But like I said, I never saw revival. What happened? Now looking back, we realized one thing. As Jehoiada was teaching Joash, he never got Joash to follow God. Joash only followed Jehoiada, the man. And that was the saddest thing. When Jehoiada was around, he was able to teach Joash to do all the right things. Jehoiada took the people and the king and made a covenant between God. But it was all Jehoiada. It was never Joash. It was never the king. It was always my teacher doing the job. And when my teacher died, the unthinkable happened. Joash went and started serving other gods. And I realized something. That was the problem. We were supposed to teach him to follow God. And I thought back in history. With the people of Israel, when we came out of Egypt, we weren't following Moses. We were following the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. It was only when the pillar moved that we were supposed to move. And as I look back in history, it was always when the people cried out to God that He sent a leader. It was never a leader coming if the people followed. People had to cry out and say, God, we need revival. And then he sent a leader. And the greatest problem that we have, always, it is we rather follow a man than to follow God. Haven't you seen it before? You have a good pastor. You follow him. But then when the pastor's gone, the church is gone. You have great group of people but then they rather follow the man and struggles come when the man falls because we don't know how to follow God and the greatest problem is this it's easier to follow man than to follow God. I remember so many times instead of praying or reading the word of God, some of my friends, they'd rather go find a prophet to pray for them. It's easier to have a prophet pray for me and tell me what to do than to actually pray. It's easier to say, oh, I felt the Lord said, than to actually stay there and pray. It's a lot easier to go, oh, I am following that man's vision, than to actually pray and say, God, give me a vision. Yeah. That was the problem we had. Joash never learned to follow God. And so Joash, he went away. What can we do? He followed the man. 
And that was not the problem. That was not the only problem. As time went on, Joel Ash never got rid of the high places in Israel. What were the high places? Because of course, I know over here, none of you would know the high places. High places were these little altars, local altars that was created to worship. It sounds simple and pure enough. You go there, you worship God. Samuel worshiped there. David worshiped there before. Solomon worshiped there before. So what's the big deal? Well, we were already told that was because the temple was never built. Now that we have the temple, you don't need the high places. The problem was this, they never got rid of the high places. And why didn't he do it? <laughs> Very simple. All these high places were controlled by powerful local priests. These local priests can control the local town. And so all these people, if you want to make them happy, don't upset the priest. And of course, these priests, they made a lot of money from opening these little altars, temples. So why would you want to go upset them? Joash was a smart king. He didn't want to deal with these priests. But Joash was not a good king that followed God because he didn't deal with these high places. What's wrong with these high places? If you're worshiping God, it's okay, right? It just makes it a lot easier to go. Worshiping God. Worshiping God at any place that you want. No, 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 no. You guys don't understand. You Malaysians don't understand. At all these places, it's not just worshiping Jehovah. It was worshiping El. It was worshiping Baal. I was worshiping Asherah. I was worshiping Dagon. You don't make big money by just worshiping one God. You diversify. Diversification is key to business, you see. You've got to have many products. That's why you have the iPhone Plus and the iPhone S. Diversification. What's so bad about worshiping these different gods? Come on. Can't be that bad, right? See, you Malaysians don't understand. When worshiping Baal, Dagon, Ashra, all these have to do with prostitution. Can you imagine? Going to church and prostitution were the same thing. If you really love God, come and sleep with the prostitutes. During those days, the men's ministry exploded. All the men came to church on time. And when they invited their friends, hey, Bob, you want to go to church? Yeah. It wasn't that hard to invite a guy to church. All men were interested in coming to church. But can you imagine what that did to the families? Families were destroyed. Families broken up. God hated it. But then I thought to myself, how many times have I given up family for success? These people went because they knew if they worshiped Baal, Ashra, Dagon, it'll bring them success in their business. 
And how many times have we sacrificed our families for success in our business? It wasn't just Daigon. They also had Molech. Molech was an interesting god. Molech was the god where you have to sacrifice your little baby on it. And it was said that if you sacrifice your firstborn, you sacrifice your baby, you will be successful in life. You'll make a lot of money. You want to be blessed? Kill the baby. You want to be successful? Kill the baby. And I know you in your modern day context are thinking nobody does that anymore, right? Sorry to tell you. Same thing is happening. Haven't you ever heard? I can't have this baby. If I have this baby, what's going to happen with my life? I'm too young to have a baby. I'm not ready to have a baby. I can't afford to have a baby. So I just have to take it away. I just have to swallow a pill and the baby's gone and I have success. Sounds the same, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And now you know. It's the same thing. It is where we are trying to live a life, but it's actually there's something that is in our life, a stronghold that we have not gotten rid of. I, I don't think you understand how this works. I don't know if you ever prayed this prayer that I prayed. I prayed where, Lord, I want to live for you. It is not long, it's no longer I that live, but I want to live for you. I want the old ways to be gone. You know, there's a very cruel way of killing somebody. And this way was developed where you tie a corpse to the man. And when you tie the corpse to the man, what happens is, in the beginning, it's not that bad. In the beginning, the corpse is there, you're there, not too bad. After a day or two, it starts to smell a bit. It starts to rot a bit. Liquid starts to come out a bit. That little bit start going on your body. That little bit start eating up your body. That little bit start going into your flesh. You start to smell like the corpse. And soon, you become the corpse. Can you imagine that? I know it's hard for you to imagine, so I brought my little friend. I can't see my little friend, it's so dark. Where is my little friend? You guys got my friend? Oh, I see my friend coming now. You could give them a little light, the audience. You see, this is the new me. The new me, the one that want to do good. But this is the old me. He has the better figure. <laughs> but so many times, I've made the prayer. I know you guys are much better than me. But I made the prayer of saying, God, I don't want to live the way that I've lived before. So, you know, that's it. It's now me. The problem is this, you're supposed to be the new you, but instead of just living by yourself,
you like to take the old self with you. So, when you come to worship, have you always realized when you come to worship, somehow strangely enough, some people always have an empty chair next to them. <laughs> Do you know why it's empty? Because it's not empty. <laughs> There's someone sitting there. So, when the usher is asking them, excuse me, do you mind moving over us just one seat? No, I can't. Why not? There's someone there. And the usher's thinking, do, 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 uh, okay. Because You don't like to come by yourself. You bring the old you with you. And interestingly enough, during worship, it's the new you. Lord, I worship you. But then, when you leave, as you get in the car, the old you comes out. Okay, we're driving now. <laughs> hey, man! You know how to drive, leh? Roll your home, eh? Ring bay one, go home, eh? <laughs> See, the old you come out. Then, you go to the restaurant. I don't know about you. During the temple days, when we end worship, we go out, we get our falafel. Maybe you guys go get your satay. Are the people happy to see you? Because do you go by saying, hey, auntie, four people, please? Or is it, hey, old lady, long time already, leh. <laughs> you know, you're hungry. Yeah, it's all right. It's not a cuss word. Okay, all right. So, what's the problem? Because you're not by yourself. And so you come to church. You come to worship. You always bring the old self. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's him. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's him. Sometimes it's you. And then more and more it's him. And somehow, how do you know it's more of him? He likes to sit on top. <laughs> because it's easier to hide in the crowd. It's easier not to be seen. And slowly his death comes back to you. The old self starts to take over the new self. And you see the high places or the strongholds. The old self that's in your life. Most people cannot see that old self. Because it's just in you. But that's the problem, isn't it? We say we want to live anew. We make the prayer. But we just like to take him along. And sooner or later, He takes over your life.
now he's just been through two services. He's very tired. Can somebody help me to take him down? Power of God! <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. All right. He's going to be under the power for a while. You know, we almost saw revival. But Joash followed a man. Joash never got rid of the high places. One day, King of Aram came to attack. Joash called us up. He had a group call. He said, hey, everybody, come. Get, rid get ready the temple. Get ready all the stuff. Oh, finally, we said, finally, thank God Joash woke up. Finally, Joash is going to come back to the true God. Finally, Joash is going to make it happen. He's going to pray to God. So we prepared the temple. We got everything ready. We got the chairs. We got the plates. We got the altar. We washed up everything. We were ready. And we said, hey, Joash, we're ready, man. So what are you going to do? What song you want to sing? Which altar call song? Are you ready? So you want a long worship, short worship? Are you going to lay hands? You want catchers? What do you want? And Joash told us this. He said, oh, I'm not going to worship. I want you to take everything that you have and give it to the king of Aram. We were shocked. Joash, what are you thinking? These things, they belong to David. They belong to Solomon, Jehoshaphat. It's been in your family for generations. These things are sacred. They've been given to God. You can't take what belonged to God, what was sacred, and give it away. You can't do it. Joash looked at us and laughed. You guys are so superstitious. Do you really think God is going to care about a little plate? I was getting so angry, and then all of a sudden I realized, who am I to judge? How many times have I taken what was sacred and I gave it away? How many times have I taken the time that I said, this time belonged to God? But then, I used that time for myself. How many times have I came to the temple? And I sat there as I was about to worship. Somebody sent me a message. A pigeon comes by. And I see people sending messages all over. Pigeons flying. Yeah, during those days, texting. Texting was not very simple. You had to get the newest pigeon. <laughs> Sometimes the pigeon don't work. You have to reboot it. Reboot it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. During my days, some of us would be working on our tablets when the priest was worshiping. Each of us bring our own tablets. A bit noisy when we worked on our tablets. <laughs> Facebook didn't work very well during our days. What was sacred? was not secret anymore. 
You might be here today, but your heart's not here. You might be here today, but you're thinking about the lunch that you're about to have in 15 minutes. Yeah. No, it's okay. I'm the same way. And so I realized it's not just Joash. It's me. I have taken what was sacred and I gave it away. But then, my elder, Zechariah, he came. Zechariah was the son of my teacher, Jehoiada. Him and Joash, they were like this. Best of friends. And he came. He looked at Jehoiada. He looked at Joash. And he told him, Joash, my friend, don't do this anymore. My friend, listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Come on. Listen to me, please. Don't go on. God is not pleased. Don't go on. And I'm thinking, finally, oh Lord, shall we still have revival in this generation? Lord, if anybody can do it, it's Zechariah. I can see the Spirit of the Lord on Zechariah as he's speaking. I can see Joash sitting there his face turning red. I'm thinking maybe it's from embarrassment. I'm thinking finally, something good is about to happen. Zechariah told Joash, don't do it. And after a minute sitting there silent, Joash said this, guards kill this man Joash forgot what Zechariah's father did for him he killed Zechariah right there he killed him Zechariah died and I couldn't believe myself. He was not willing to listen anymore. As I was about to get angry, then I thought to myself, how many times have I not listened? When people tell me, hey, Levi, don't do that. Don't be with this person. You're going to get in trouble. Watch out. This person's trouble. You better not get into this relationship. And I looked at Jehoiada and I said, oh, come on. What do you know about love, old man? I was the same. I don't listen. So many times people have tried to tell me, hey, Levi, watch out. Don't go in that business. It's not going to be good for you. I didn't listen. So many times have you told me, watch out. You keep on doing that, you're going to get in trouble. And I don't listen. I don't listen. How many times have we not listened? Relationships. Watch out. That man is big trouble. Watch out. You don't want to be with that woman. Watch out. That group of friends, they're going to take you down. Watch out. Hey, don't go to that party. Don't go to that party. You go there, it's going to cause trouble. We don't listen. Almost had revival. 
we were following a man. We never took care of our strongholds. And the secret things that was in our life, we gave it away. And then at the end of the day, we wouldn't listen. And I realized it's not a problem of Joash. It's a problem of me. I stop revival from happening. I was the one who stopped revival. I was the problem. And so today I come to you. Do you long for revival? Do you long for something different? In my generation, it never happened. But what happened in your generation? It's too late for me now. But what happened for you? Are you following a man? and not God? Do you have a stronghold that you're not willing to take care of? Are you giving away what is sacred? Your time, your talent. And are you not willing to listen anymore? Because your spirit is dull. Almost revival. Don't you long for your country to change? I promise you one thing. Just because the political party might change, the country will not change. The country will never change with the political leaders. I promise you that. But the country will change when there is a spiritual awakening and then a turning back to God. And it starts with you, and it starts with me.